Welcome to this episode of the Civil War Digital Digest. I'm your host, Jeremy, and today taking a little bit of a different approach as we're looking to maybe help those that are just getting into the reenacting hobby on how to deal with one of their pieces of gear, or if you just like learning about the everyday soldier's life, there's going to be some good content here for you as well. So I remember when I first got into the hobby and I got my leathers, in particular my cartridge box, and I, I got it out of the box and I looked at it all and I, I was so excited. But there was all these plates and these leather pieces and I had no idea what to do with it. And today now reading Cy Klieg, he talks about in here that he was so excited that he couldn't rest until he tried on his cartridge box. Um, of course he had Shorty to help him figure out what to do with it all. I didn't have Shorty, maybe we'll help be that for you. So let's get started. Um, the first thing we have is the plates and we want to attach those. That's going to be the part that takes the most work. When you go to attach your plate on your cartridge box, generally speaking, you want to kind of find that visual center. You can look at original images, there's going to be some variation, but that's a pretty good place to start. Now, we don't have a new cartridge box to work with today, but I think you'll be able to get the steps down the same. Really, then you just take the plate and with the loops on the back, find that visual center and give it a good hard push down into that leather and kind of rock it around. What you're looking to do is to mark those loops on the leather just enough where you can see where they go. We're going to flip it open here so we just have the single layer of leather and then just take a, maybe a leather punch. Um, I got a pocket knife here and you're just going to want to work down into that leather, maybe having a piece of wood on the underside to, to catch the blade. Be careful if you're using a pocket knife like a folder like this so you don't push so hard you end up folding it over on yourself. Or if you had a larger blade, you can only do this once. You don't want to make that slit too large. So go easy and, and go slow. Take your time with it. Once you have those two slits, we're going to pop the plate in. You might have to push and work it down in there for the first time. Once those loops are through, there's two different ways you've seen in originals to get it to stay. You can bend the loops over, which um, your cartridge box may or may not allow because of the thickness of the leather. But the other downside of that is it makes it really hard to get it off to either polish the plate or give that leather a good oiling. Another option would be just taking a piece of leather, cutting it nice and thin and maybe having a, a bit of a taper on it so it'll bite into the loops and threading it through. So we're going to do that now. You kind of just push that through. Um, I would suggest going with a longer piece of leather than what you originally think. And then you can trim it down to fit, which is what I had already done with this piece. And if you need, you might need to use a little bit of some pliers or some tweezers as well. All right. There you have the leather is through both loops. It's wedged in real tight on this one with that taper, so it's not going to go anywhere. You'll repeat and do the same thing with the sling. I'll caution on this one that when I first started out my first cartridge box, I had multiple holes punched down my sling as I figured out where I wanted this cartridge box to lie. It drove me crazy. Um, so it might even not be a bad idea. Attend an event or two before you even put this breastplate on or, or have somebody, your shorty, <laughs> help you with where the box goes. Usually kind of behind. Um, up off the hip, that's where it looks like it rides in a lot of original images and you can pull it around front when the time comes. After that, it's the same step as the cartridge box. Alright, to get to the next stage we need to attach the sling or find a way really to attach this to our body and there's, I'll say two main ways usually you can do that. You can see there's loops here that are for the sling and there's loops down here that are for the belt buckle. Now, the belt, when you slide it through, you just put it right through those loops, and then you would reattach your belt buckle. What I wanted to kind of show is, Cy Klieg talks about unclasping his cartridge box when he goes to rest, and another veteran, Leander Stilwell, mentions multiple times in his writings and, and memoirs, about buckling and unbuckling his cartridge box when he's resting or getting ready to fall in. So I just found that really interesting that obviously at least those two veterans chose to do it this way on the belt. In a lot of images though, 
You see it just attached to the sling and you can tell by the way the box is on the body and in relation to the belt. So we would just slide it rough side out through that first loop there and what you're doing is actually creating an X. Like so, from the loop to the opposite buckle. Now the interesting part is you loop up from underneath the buckle so the smooth side is on the roller part of the buckle. And then tighten it down. This is again where some of that adjustment comes in and why I ended up with multiple holes punched into my sling for my plate as I moved it around. You kind of just tuck those leather pieces and there you have it, the box is secured to the sling. Now onto the inside, and this is kind of getting a little bit more into that detail of a soldier's life. There is an implement pocket, and that's what it's referred to in the 1862 Ordnance Manual, implement pocket, and that's for keeping the tools that we need to clean and maintenance our weapon. So we're going to put a cone wrench, tampion, a wiper for the cleaning patch, a spare cone, a spare cone pick, and cleaning patches. Now, I've never had any problems with being able to just toss all of these different items right into this implement pocket. I know some who have trouble with their pocket staying closed and secure and they might lose their items. So figure out what works best for you. They would have been doing the same thing. If this doesn't work because it's not secure enough, then toss them in your knapsack. We also have here a vise and a drift, and these would have been tools most likely given to a sergeant, and maybe the sergeant would have carried. Um, we're not going to deal with those today. I don't know that they'd really fit in my implement pocket, so they probably would go in the knapsack if I was to carry them. All right, so now let's get this, the cartridges loaded into this cartridge box. That's the whole point of it. So what we have here are 40 cartridges. There's tins. You should use the tins because it provides structural integrity to the box. It helps protect the cartridges and it also helps keep them organized. There's a spot down below to put a full arsenal pack and then at the top to put rounds that have already been opened up so they're ready to be loaded. So we're just going to drop those into our box, get it closed up, and there we have it. We got a 40 round loaded cartridge box ready to go on campaign. I hope that this episode will help you out if you're just getting started in living history. And I also hope maybe it gives you a little glimpse into that um, minutia of a soldier's life that we're not going to read about in history books. Thank you for watching this episode of the Civil War Digital Digest. If you enjoyed this episode, please hit that like button and share it out to your friends. <laughs>